Okay, taking a look at the three steps to making the right chess move for yourself. I'm going to go in on a 15 minute, 10 second game. And the three steps are simply calculating the decision on the calculation and then stop, look and listening to the decision before you make the move that you've decided on. A bit like crossing the road. Before you put your foot on the um, road, you um, look left, you look right, just to make sure it's safe. Same thing with this. I keep reiterating this throughout the mini series that we're doing, just so we're clear on the, the three steps that are needed to try and make the better move for yourself. Might not be the best move for everybody, um, but the level of play that we're looking at as casual, casual players, who just want to have a bit more enjoyment in the games, just like myself, and maybe shock and surprise the game every now and then. But looking to try and improve the decisions that we make, because the moves are made from a decision, from the calculation. So we're x-raying through to the queen. And at this point we can take, let's take. I'm going to take, it doubles their pawns. Surprised they took actually, but do we castle kingside now or not? Because they're going to have this attack coming here. I think we're going to move the knight and see if we've got time to move and castle queenside. That seems to be the safer option if we get time, but obviously we still might get time because we can push the pawn. Yep. Bishop comes here to prevent that, so we just castle queen side. So that looks fairly okay. Oh no, it's come there blocking. But the problem with that is we can't just hit the bishop with a smaller piece because we've got the defense of the knight. So simple potatoes, small, tiny calculation, allowing us to castle. Just bearing in mind the x ray through is hitting a higher piece, which is the rook. So probably moving the rook off of the line, maybe. Or just doubly attacking the bishop, which is like condensing the bishop into an area it doesn't really want to be going to. It's blocking their rook. Which is a positive for us. Okay, so it's taking it away from the x-ray through to the rook. Next movement we're thinking is because this pawn is supporting here, we could potentially get the knight into the game a little bit more. Are we going to get time to do that? Because the movement of this pawn looks like it's going to be attacking our bishop. So can we do a bit of preemptive movement? Uh, we could go here, but uh, we could just bring it back. It's blocking the knight's movement. I suppose the knight could come here. So they'll be charging down with the pawns anyway, because it's now attacking our king side. So what's the decision? Bishop's not really trapped. We could look to just keep pushing, but the bishop can just move to the side. We know this is coming. Do we wait for it to come and then we just attack the rook? And then it's a nice position for the bishop? I think so. I'm gonna push the pawn. That's the decision. We've stopped, looked and listened to the potential things that can happen. And it's not saying any of that's going to happen. So they've gone and castled. Okay, so we've got pieces on their king side, which could be a plus. I'm going to hit the bishop in the meantime. We know it's just going to go back, which is fine. And now does it give us play with the knight? Or is that being a bit too, too eager? This pawn doesn't have any protection, so obviously the bishop can take. And then come back again and put a check on the king. So we'll take the pawn because the bishop is no longer protecting because of the force of this pawn. So the rook obviously moves out of the way and we put the check on like we said. Is there anything different? No, let's just put a check on the king. Are we looking to trade off? Does double the pawns though. So does this allow the knight in here? There's no real good spaces for the knight, is there? Knight here, knight here knight here that looks nice i don't know if they're going to let us do that so let's follow that pattern i think the rook is just going to hit the bishop so we'll lose a bit of tempi it's tempting to go here and just attack the bishop but i don't think we're going to do that 
Although if we do come here, he's chasing the bishop around. Okay, so one of them attacks either way. So going to bring the bishop here. No, maybe not there. Could bring it here. No, we can't. Let's just bring it like we said here. Obviously, it's going to get hit. It's tempting to think, oh, do I just come back here? Well, it could get trapped somewhere, couldn't it? Let's just see. Gets attacked, go there. King drops. Oh, the rook comes across. Then he starts hitting the bishop. Bishop's got nowhere to go. So he's not doing that just yet. So the knight could still go with this. Just double the pawns there. Hmm. Could go here. Yep. Let's go with the knight still. Fork in the bishop and the rook. That's the decision. We stopped, looked and listened after we did the calculation. And the calculation can happen real quick. But then the decision then, you know, that's, that's another like pause moment to say, well, okay, calculation, which one are we going to choose? We've chosen this one. Then we pause just to take a little look, stop, look and listen before we cross the road. What potentially can they do? They can attack, but we'll go for the fork. So he's not interested in that, but we can still, still get a fork on his rook and the bishop with the knight. So get a fork on the rook and the bishop. So it's even exchanges at the minute, so it could quite easily be a draw. They've got poor, poor majority on this side. We've got poor majority on that side. So we can take the bishop. Is there anything better? I think we're just going to simplify and just take the bishop. So they've got two split pawns here. And they've got linked pawns here and they've got poor majority on that side. Is there a way of bringing the rook here and here? But then we don't have any further support. Going to bait the pawn down because this pawn will will attack the rook. Rooks in the center of the board have no place unless it's to your benefit. Don't think there's much benefit there because it's just not going to be in the game then after that, is it? Because they simply just come and defend. So they're probably waiting for us to do that. And all they do is just defend. So if we bring this rook here, and if then they do push, then we can take probably bringing this rook behind because they're waiting to do that and it does look nice but it's just not going to be in the game even if they come across and they attack it's not doing that just yet something strange going on right let's push this pawn he can still do this. We're waiting for it. Obviously not yet until either this or maybe the... Is he making space for... Nope, I don't know what that is. Can push this pawn. And if we want to attack... I'm going to push this pawn. Does weaken this pawn. Just looking at the idea of attacking here. We could always swim back. Try to use the poor majority we've got because they've not taken action yet on this. So ideally this is a draw and we're trying to make it not a draw as best possible. But, you know, I'm happy going for draws either way. Using the three steps to making the right moves. So the king's move. So I'm going to attack the pawn. I don't think there's anything wrong with that attack. Even if they don't take. But maybe there is. Maybe there's something. Still they can't do that because we can just take the pawn here. So they do take. Now we've got three pieces on there. So you think that they decide to move the rook now. So again, calculating, deciding, and then stop looking and listening. 
all can happen fairly quickly but those that's the process that we're going through in order to make what we believe is the right moves not necessarily is the right moves so the king's down supporting so we can take can hit their rook rook goes back no, in fact, it doesn't go back because the pawn is going to chase it. So then it goes here. So that's not going to be a very good move, is it? So we attack and then there, and then really we'd lose that one. So we may as well just take the pawn off the board. So momentarily we have pawn majority on this side. And we... Hmm. So now we can bring the rook across can't we because something's telling me the activity is changing slightly yep so we can move across i think now this pawn's going to get attacked so we'll get a bit get get ready to bring this rook here and defend this pawn's jamming this one in where are they looking to go? Are they looking to come for both of these pawns? I think they are. Yeah, I think that's what they're planning to do. So we could bring our rook here. And then it stops that off. He comes down, puts a check on the king. Then we can slide the rook across as well. So we're protecting both pawns, it looks like to me. Or is that just a fancy way of doing it? So if we go here, he still comes down and attacks this pawn. And then I'm having to run across here. But then that gives us the opportunity to push and attack. But then he can come and get this pawn. Then we can keep pushing. I think I like this one best. What well, his king can't come in to stop that, can it? No. Let's just bring the rook here because it's kind of just stopping the whole idea of this and this. So I believe. Again, calculation, decision stop look and listen before you move so he does come down for the check on the king let's move the king hopefully to safety is he looking to just bring his other rook around and try and damage this pawn here we do have elements of simply moving here to attack this pawn put pressure on the king so a lot of the elements come around doing your pre-calculation so in this state here, I'm thinking in the opponent's time and in longer play games, um, that's a key thing of, you know, calculating during the opponent's time. So you may think, well, I didn't actually do any calculation type thing, but you will have done because you will have been calculating in the opponent's time. And that's where maybe problems do arise, where if you've calculated in the opponent's time and they make a move and you don't look really fully at the move they've made, you've not stopped, looked and listened to what they've done, then you follow the tunnel vision movements of what you calculated previously and what you've decided. So you have to be very careful. Calculating in your opponent's time can set you down a tunnel vision. So make sure that when they've made their move, you then do a, a proper calculation in your own time to make sure that the decision that you made from the calculation was right. Stop, look and listen before you then make your move. So what's happening here? It's a few things. We can just push the pawn up. We can bring the rook like we said to here to look to see if we're challenging the rooks, challenging the pawn. I think that's the simple way of operating this i'm just bringing the rook across we mentioned this earlier when we said we were going to bring it here we can bring the rook across and look to see if we can challenge the rooks they may just come and just support each other but we can attack the pawn so they may come and bring the rook here so they're playing defense nanny which is good okay so we can attack this rook but then he just drops the rook and what do we do because we do have a pawn majority on this side. So we could push onto their pawn. Yeah, we could push onto their pawn, see what they do. They don't have to take. Say they take. 
we take. We're not going to get this pawn any further up, are we? It, he comes down. We take, and he's in a good position because then he just... Mm -hmm. Challenges, challenges. King supporting the pawn. Don't want to push up because he's got a check on the king, but the king can go up. So it's elevating the king a little bit up the board. But then he pushes the pawn onto the pawn. No, maybe not because the rook's defending there. Interesting. What would you do? Attack this rook, comes back, or just brings it down. Or do you go all the way back, looking to attack the king this way? Brings his rook across, take, take. Okay, three steps to making the right move. I've done calculations. Now I've got to make a decision. I am plumping for this. That is my number one choice. I'm also plumping for this. Rook comes down, king goes up. Don't think they're going to push the pawn down because we can take take that one offers a little bit more pressure towards the king so let's keep that safe also this pushing the pawn i'm going to push the pawn i'm going to push the pawn and take and the decision was based on the fact that I didn't really want him doing this stuff here for now. So now I can attack his rook. And he brings his rook down. We take. And then he has to go here, then we get that pawn. He doesn't have to do that, of course, but um, let's attack the rook. X-ray him through to the king. I mean, if he simply takes and we take with the pawn, this pawn probably isn't going anywhere because we've got a pawn blocking. Like we said, if he goes, no, he's not doing that. Okay, let's take. So the pawn's getting highly advanced up the board. And we do have a check on the king. So Rook can come and put a check on the king. King probably looks to come forward. Then we would take the pawn. So maybe they go here to defend the pawn. So it looks like we're never getting this pawn unless our king gets into the game. So we'd have to come round with the king here, here and take the pawn off the board. At which point we'd get a few checks on. Yep. I think we'll go with that let's put the check on so that's the calculation we've done we've made the decision now ah the support in the pawn the support in the pawn down this pawn is still protecting the area he's looking to get this pawn off the board so he's getting his king closer but he does get his rook taken off the board as well so i'm going to take the pawn so if he is making inroads to oh no where's he going it's coming to take this pawn. So we're going to just defend here with the pawn here. And if we get here, then he has to come out again. Then we can put a check on and get this pawn off the board. Whilst he's taking this off here. Intricate details. Calculate, decide. Stop, look and listen to the move before you make the move. Like I say, it can happen very quickly, but so long as I'm, I'm practicing some type of process, feeling a bit more comfortable with the position and the situation, 
So he's coming down to try. Oh, I know what he's doing. What if the rook comes here? Then the pawn pushes down. The pawn can't take because the king is getting in check. Yep. So what we have is rook putting a check on the king here. King's not coming here. King goes there. Rook puts a check on the king. King probably doesn't want to block his rook. So probably goes up. Probably goes up. And we were thinking of taking the pawn, but I think we might lose out there. So if, if their rook comes down, we can then come here, can't we? But then he can keep putting checks on. We go here. Hmm. That's more than four there, isn't it? One. Two. Don't think he's going to go down, but he could do. Doesn't want to block his rook, really. Two. Three. Four. Right, four. What is the problem with that? It's kings all the way up there. Comes for the pawn. Wow, oh, the rook can't go up because the king's there. I won't be able to protect the pawn. Hmm. Decisions, decisions, decisions. So the whole issue is about this here. Let's put the check on first anyway. So we'll follow it up to the point of even potentially them coming all the way down here. Now, does it look different? Does it feel different? Put the check on, like we said. Now it's decision time. Is, does it go here or does it go here? I don't think he's wanting to block the rook because the rook wants to do this. Oh, they've resigned. Nice one. But um, let me just have a look. Let me have a look. Let me have a look. I don't like celebrating when it's not. Ooh. We're happy. We're happy. Nice. So we said they were potentially probably going here because they didn't want to block the rook. Right, so... Then we could go and just defend the pawn, couldn't we? Rather than taking the pawn. But we wanted the pawn, so we take. So then we were a little bit worried about this move here. Because they can drop. Now, at this point, the computer is actually saying rook g5, which is defending the pawn here. I was saying bringing the king down here, wasn't I? Let's see what that would have looked like if we did do that. Oh, plus 6.5. Well, that's not bad. That's not bad at all. Rook g2. Then he, Yeah, then he was going to get the pawn. But then we do have passes, which we can push up. So it wouldn't have been too bad at all, really. I mean, could have put a check on the king, but I don't know if that's going to work. Put a check on the king just to support the pawn. But the king comes here, then the rook just comes across and keeps supporting. That's probably what I would have plumped for. Uh, 6.4, that's okay still. And it's saying c7 to attack it. And then just bring it around here, maybe, or somewhere. Do, do, do. Or even across a little bit. Yeah, bringing it here would be nice. 
Yeah, so that wasn't too bad at all using the um, three steps to make the right decision. Just basically using calculation, decision making, then stopping and looking and listening to the moves before you actually make the move. Is it dangerous? Is it still OK? Um, and as we've mentioned, most of your calculation will probably be done in your opponent's time, especially if it's a long play game over the board. But you have to then reassess once they've made the move just to make sure that it is genuinely the right move. Stop, look and listen. OK, so we're looking at the three steps to making the right decision for you, the right chess move for you. It might not be the most per perfect movement in the world ever. Um, and this isn't aimed at anybody of any high level in chess or any supreme grandmaster. It's not none of that level there. And you're looking at people who like casual chess players, you know, they might not even have a rating, you know, they just play just for the fun of it. So this is the kind of level we're talking about here for myself included in that. Yes, I have a rating, but really I don't play that many games um, to really write home about. So at this moment in time, we're just looking at how, how we can try and develop our interest in the game, play more interesting games, more risky games, um, do the unusual type stuff and three steps to making the right chess move. There's three manoeuvres. There's the calculating, there's the decision on the calculation and then there's the stop, look and listen to the decision. Is it the right decision? Is it dangerous to you or is it still OK? Because we might make a, de a decision out of many calculations. It doesn't mean it's necessarily the right one. It's like crossing the road. Before you put your foot on the um, road, normal human being would look left, right, left, right again, just to make sure that it is safe to cross the road. Same thing with this. The stop, look and listen is, yes, you've made the decision from the calculation. Take that moment to say, OK, am I comfortable about this or is there something actually coming to run me over? Do I need to take a step back and relook and reassess this decision? So we're going to go in on a 15 minute, 10 second game to see if we can practice these three steps. Calculate, decide. Stop, look and listen before you make the move. So let's just push through in the centre here. So we're not looking at specific techniques or ideas. We're always going to be using the mantra as our backdrop, our safety net. So we're going to just bring the knight out and the patterns that we recognise, obviously we can move through these fairly quickly because we recognise these patterns. Once the recognition has stopped, then we then basically look at um, calculating in our own minds making the appropriate decisions as best possible for us might not be appropriate for everybody like i say so you can look at these videos and go well i wouldn't have done this and i wouldn't have done that well you're obviously a lot better player than myself so got to be very mindful see that's a little bit shifty isn't it because we go here then the bishop's going to come and spoil the party which is a bit annoying, isn't it? And also the looking for the cheapy if we go and castle this side. Can we stop this altogether? So I'm going to just attack the queen. I know it's moving the knight twice and all that type of stuff, but let's see what it's really wanting to do. If it's still wanting to hover around here, we're going to find itself getting chased around the board. So he's greedy munching a pawn, which is a little bit disappointing really, because really that's not going to help them in the game. So we're going to bring the queen, attacking the queen. So I, sorry, I sound slightly disappointed with that manoeuvre because it's a single attack. It's not got any of his pieces out. So the queen's looking to try and get away now and it, it can't get away. So now we've got two pieces developed over there, none, which should help us in the game. So in this example, this opponent has gone, oh, I'm going to calculate and I'm going to take this pawn and it's for free, but they've actually just got run over because they didn't really stop, look and listen. So we've got three pieces now developed and the opponent hasn't got any. So now they're being forceful with the moves. We can bring the knight here looking to 
it's not attacking much at the minute but we can bring it here it looks menacing or we can bring it back and the pawn chases it around again I'm going to bring the knight here feels comfortable yeah so the pawns are just chasing it that's fine so we can bring the knight here or we can bring it here I like this one but it does block the g-pawn for activity this one's more central there's less pawns that are going to be attacking it immediately at the moment anyway so let's just bring the knight back around again one piece to develop if we need to which is the dark square bishop get castled so fairly comfortable at this moment in time so they want to take the knight so let's shove it on a little bit maybe not maybe they just go back with the bishop they're frantically now looking to develop their pieces as best possible again we're ad trying to advance the knight as if we can but we're not rushing anything we're trying to take advantage of the earlier non-stop listen look that the opponent did with their queen because they're greedy munched because they're plus one now as, as we've always said it doesn't really make a difference until obviously you know you get closer in towards the end game and the opponent's managing their piece as well so they do capture so we'll simply just capture the bishop took a while over that so they like the pawns attacking the the knight and stuff like that we can move the knight again just to get it out of the way and of any further pawn attacks because if we come here it's probably just going to take go here and go here it does look like they've left the game but we'll make this move beforehand yeah it does look like they've left so yeah even though they're plus one probably realizing that well really they've got to develop the pieces all they've been doing is pawn pushes at this moment in time and that's chess i think we'll have to play another one just to um get the practice of the three steps to making the right chess move we've got to remember it's not perfect moves that are made i can get pieces trapped i can get i can lose pieces lose minor pieces that type of thing but it's all about how the opponent reacts to the game and if they're not finding those masterful moves then so be it you can enjoy the game even more and you can shock and surprise the game that's the whole idea you know behind what we're doing at the level that we're at casual chess players and just really understanding that yeah the enjoyment can be got from the game you don't have to be like a fully fledged like 1900 2000 player to appreciate the art of chess you can be quirky you can be a little bit odd be a bit a little bit strange and um, with your gameplay you never know that's all i'm saying you can never tell in the game of chess okay just playing another 15 minute 10 second game uh, based off the last one the opponent didn't quite finish the game so let's um have a, another example hopefully a nice stronger game where we have to pull out all the stops and we're looking at basically three steps to making the right chess move and as we've mentioned it's the calculation it's the decision on the calculation this one's aborted well it must be one of those days calculation decision on the calculation then stop look and listening to the decision is it the right decision before you then make the move so we're familiar with this pattern at the minute so there's not a major calculation process going on I'm going to take here on this occasion and i'm going to take here with the check and then castle right so let's now look at the calculation it's got all these pieces aiming towards our king area we can hit this pawn but he does take that pawn so let's push this pawn supporting before we push and they've beaten us to the punch kind of wanting this area here with the bishop aren't they really we could push the pawn up onto their pawn still but we would lose the pawn let's take knight's guarding at the minute let's take the bishop let's bring the queen through nice and steadily or in fact no let's just bring the knight smaller piece attacking a higher piece can't be wrong 
So that quick shifting change there was the stop, look and listen. It was like, which is actually better? Calculation wise, bringing the queen here would have been quick and easy, but then looking at which is slightly better. Knight can come here, it's attacking the pawn. Bishop's looking, he's probably still going to try and go for the cheaper here. So I'm going to bring the knight here. The pawn will drop, so we'll just bring the knight back again. Nothing else. Yes, yeah, so they're going for the cheapy, cheap, cheap, cheap. So we're going to bring the queen across. And the bishop probably may be attacking it, but it's not a major thing. So we can sit the queen here attacking. So it does attack, so let's just bring the queen here. Probably brings the pawn now, but then we start hitting the bishop. Which way? Which way? This way, people. Probably this way. Options and choices. And it looks like they've left the game. Shocking. I don't think it's a leaving the game situation at all. Again. That's what the last one did. So we're not getting to fully demonstrate this um, <laughs> three steps to making the right chess move. Maybe the next game will um, give us a bit of a test. You know, I don't mind putting myself in bad positions, not on purpose, but, you know, um, I can give a bishop up, I can give a knight up, or I can give a rook up, you know, by accident, because I'm not. it's not perfect by any means. So, yeah, we'll go in for our next game and see how that goes. But always remembering, three steps to making the right move. The right move doesn't necessarily mean it's the right move in the eyes of a purist at all in any way, shape or form. I, like I said, I can put myself in really bad positions and even from doing all my calculation, sounds really confident about what I'm doing, the position that I'm finding, etc. Um, just because I'm wanting to believe in what I'm doing and as I've been doing them throughout the years, that I've been getting slightly better with my kind of predictions of what's going to happen. But it's nowhere near perfect and it's never going to be perfect because I'm a casual chess player and I'm looking to develop nice and slowly, really kind of enjoying the journey and also in preparation for the next tournament as well, wanting to build up that experience so that I can utilise the mantra um, which has got all of these concepts that we're talking about here uh, included in with them and it's not adding anything and these were already in there we're just now reframing and re-looking at how we can address the weaknesses that have been identified in our recent evaluations and we're just rebadging them and retitling them so yeah nothing is perfect in the answer to chess but there's just the enjoyment of playing the game of chess Okay, just uh, looking at how to basically look at the movements that you've made, the decision that you've made. So there's a few key stages. There's the calculation. So you calculate the movements that you think are good. And then there's the decision about which movements are the best ones to make. Yeah, so you calculate it, you've got options and choices. Then you decide which one you're going to go with. And so from that decision, then, you know, you make your move. But is there a stage before you make the move? So you make the decision from the, from the calculation, but then is there a decision just before you actually physically make that move? I believe there is. So for me, I've calculated that, yes, bringing the knight out, it's hitting a, a, a higher piece with a lesser piece. And before I made the move, I confirmed in my head that that is the move that I'm definitely going to make out of all of the other calculations that could have potentially happened. That is the move I'm going to make. So I'm calculating that bringing the knight out here allows me to get space for my king, also develops a piece, and there's no other harm or foul things that can happen to me. So I'm bringing the knight out. So that's after the decision's made. Yeah, so there's like three key stages throughout making your moves, especially in long play games. So in this one here, um, my decision is, I've calculated obviously that I want to develop the bishop out, 
get the king to safety. So that's the move I'm going to make. So after that, I've made the decision. I'm going to make this move. I'm now scouring to see if there's any other things that potentially are wrong with that based off of the calculation that I've originally made. But no, I'm sticking with the decision. So we'll bring the bishop here. It's For me, it's a good way of really finalising that movement of the ball because it's the physical movement of the ball that is the end result of what you've decided so simple capturing of this bishop seems straightforward there's no hassles no problems it's given us a bit of a benefit because it's got a diagonal coming towards their rook if they forget themselves so we will take that so we calculated that that was a safe move to make and there's no problems now the queen's coming and attacking so we can look to exchange the queen off quite easily and still keep this diagonal on the pawn here so for me bringing the queen through is a good calculation and the decision is there's no other problems that is going to cause me any issues so i'm going to bring the queen here that moment before the decision making is me basically saying well stop Take a look because there's nothing worse than when I've done, looked at my evaluations afterwards in my games and some of the recorded games and they've blocked that off there. So we nice attempt, um, but no cigar. Yeah, so when I've looked at my evaluations, my last in my games, then you see like gaping holes where you could have done a better move. And it's so obvious as well. So this is me trying to negate that. So castling, I'm going to castle, um, calculation is king safety, I can't see any other problems with um, their attacks or they're not attacking us and there's no weaknesses at the minute. So fairly safe with castling, so that movement is okay. Obviously I'm calculating now and I'm just thinking well this pawn is pushing up into the centre to make space for our dark square bishop and it's also giving king, uh, company to our king but it all depends on what the opponent's going to do next if their movement is not a threatening, threatening move we can get away with doing this particular move and getting the bishop out okay, so it's not a threatening move we're going to continue with that movement here so the decision's already made, I'm fairly comfortable. We can now just bring the bishop out, like we said, and they're obviously going to defend. And at this point now, I'm thinking, is there anything meaty? Don't know why I'm drawn to pushing the pawn here, because really it's just leaving this pawn hanging. So I need to refrain from that and just probably just push the pawn here. Can't really see a problem with that at all. Let's just push this pawn. So the opponent's not really doing anything to damage us. There's no key threats, so we may as well just keep everything as tight as possible. There's a half open file here with the rook. So again, potentially looking to say, well, the rook is probably going to be coming here. Where is the knight looking to come trying to disrupt our um, pawn structure? So their knight movement coming across here, coming across there, that could impact us. So it's a future tense thing, but I'm probably overly respecting their position at this moment. Is there anything else that our, our pieces can do? Do we have a whirlwind of our own? Not really. So I think maybe even the rook just coming here, protecting the pawn, and we can start powering up on this side. Prevention is better than cure. Doesn't look too um, defense nanny. Because like I said, the opponent isn't actually doing anything to attack. They're still in defence mode, going castling. Whichever side they're going to choose to castle. It's like they stop, look and listen in the mantra. You know, you do your calculation, that's fine. And that calculation is kind of just based off of options and choices. You're choosing the best options as best possible out of those choices. And then from there, the decision before yeah, you've made your decision, you're going to make that move. But 
like in business, like in anything, like in crossing the road or whatever it is, you've made the decision to cross the road. But before you step off of a curb, you're still checking left, right, left, right before your foot physically steps across there. Unless, of course, you're on your phone and you're paying no attention to anything um, in case then that's a bit dangerous. Um, but other, other than that, normal human would still be checking before their foot even lands on the on the um, road. That's what this is, yeah? We're calculating, we're making options and choices, and we can, then we're making a decision, and then before we make the physical move, we're looking left, right, up, down, side, yep, yeah? just to make sure that that decision was correct, because we don't want to get run over. So this is quite nice having all of these here. Um, like it's, like you know, I don't really like the bishop having this diagonal, but it is biting on granite at this moment if it does. We can come here, but then it's going to blast through. And with them not actually castling, looks to me like they're going to be castling queenside and they want to have these pawns raining down on us. So I could just bring the bishop here, but again, it's still doing that same type of thing. Or we could just bring it back and it's kind of acting as a pawn. In these long play games, you know, you probably can get away with this type of slow stamina type patience training thing. Yeah, like we did in the previous um, session. So it's choosing the right one. What do I like? I don't really like that. If the bishop takes... I'm not getting to be much of a fan of this where they come blasting down. Bishop does have the space here. So it'll be managing this diagonal. So it might not be too much to worry about. We do have this, but again, it just drops down. We do have this. And we'd have right back here. So out of those, which is going to be the better one? Do you know, I'm going to stick with this because the queen isn't on the board. I'm, my brain was thinking, why am I going to struggle in this one here when I have done it for many years? It's just, I think there's more pieces on the board sometimes and it ends up squishing our king. But the queen isn't here to cause that much damage towards our king area. Once it drops down, we can come here and then he starts pushing this pawn down, pushing it and we can push up and stuff. So that's okay. So that took a long while to get to that. It's just that I've had a lot of experience recently where I'm trying to look at changing the way that I move and I've questioned it just now. And the decision is I can weather the attacks. I'm familiar with that. The queen isn't on the board, so I, I can weather that type of technique and concept. Fingers crossed it works. But as chess player, you get so many options and choices, so many concepts and strategies that, you know, at any given moment, any given time, the movement that you dislike would be the perfect move, you know, based off of the evaluation that I've recently done, you know, and the movement, yes, so they've gone for it. So we're saying we're happy with what we know about this type of position, the queen isn't on the board, so we're just going to push the pawn up here. So this all looks fairly simple and straightforward now. And key thing for us is here. Now they've pushed onto the bishop. That means they've got a bit of a situation. Yeah, they're coming greedy munching for the bishop. Bishop can't move at this moment, but it can take this pawn. Yeah, can take this pawn. We can bring our bishop up and then x-ray through to their rook. So there's still movements that we can make. And let's have a look at this. Because we said we're so used to these types of positions, it's not really going to cause us any trouble. Now we're going to be down a minor piece, it looks like, from this situation. This is how we're going to play this game. A piece for a piece, no matter how small. Okay, so now they're going to be feeling really good. 
and this is where we come into our own in a sense of developing in the game we're used to being pieces down like minor pieces pawns down etc even the even the major pieces but it's about how you play and position on the board like we did in the last game and we've demonstrated in previous games as well it's being used to those types of positions and then trying to just work the pieces together and really again looking to see if the opponent's going to make a mistake it's it's one of those things um chess is like a very strange situation we've already got protection on the pawn here they've got to make a choice now do they castle no they're not interested they're going to trade down which makes sense because they've got more pieces on the board now but in the eyes of what we're doing let's just take here we just want to make space around their pieces around the area and try and manage best possible key squares key pieces just because they've got more pieces on the board doesn't mean they've won the game always got to remember that so attacking the pawn so we can bring the king here but he's also looking to go for the rooks on this side as well yep so he's got a combination of things going on but i believe they're going to get a little bit carried away with themselves so let's just go here let's attack him takes the pawn and as we said we just want to basically improve our position on the board with the lesser pieces that we've got they haven't castled their king is still a little bit airy they're going for single attacks they can't resist it and let's just bring the rook here so the knight's going to have to move again because the king is going to take it he's looking for a fork of some sort well, he's moved out of the way okay right so we can take this knight off the ball because this pawn can't take so that's that position thing that we were talking about um earlier and this might just look like i'm getting so lucky in these games but we're talking it through as we're talking and like i said i don't play i'm not a grandmaster or anything but the opponent gives us these opportunities there's a pawn here that looks like it's free they've castled dead quick there so we could take this pawn off the board are we getting forked in any way shape I'm going to take they may look to be trading off so we're plus one now from there so we can look to see if we're going to exchange again looking for the fork no that's the only place the knight can go into it all right so we can take now or we can bring the knight up and attack their knight we're gonna just take it's pretty even Stevens might end up being a draw they're not wanting a draw so we could bring the knight here attacking this pawn we're really looking for this here that would fork the king and the rook that would be ideal and seal the game oh but it's not happening today so we could attack the rook still or maybe just attack the king put a check on first Knight's protected by the pawn. So he's probably coming here, still wants to protect the pawn. Oh, the king, rook can't come here because of the knight. Could put a check on the king. He's escaping though, he's running down. But we can take the pawn here. Let's take this pawn. hold the rook to ransom if the knight doesn't move oh okay they're going for a bit of cleverness all right let's hold the king to um the rook to ransom oh i missed the trick i missed the trick i could have got the rook oh oh going too fast yeah they spotted it oh, i'm kicking myself now Oh. oh man what a waste attack the palm the rook comes down dun, 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 dun. 
What was protecting this pawn before? Uh, oh, they left the game. I can't believe I missed that. So that was going a bit too quick, you know, with the decisions. It was like, I'm claiming victory on that. That was fine. Let's just have a look at the analysis on just on the back end of that because. So we're getting there. Went there. Plus seven. So this is where the knight should be just jumping. Oh, I didn't drop too far. It was plus nine. And then obviously that's where the knight should have been jumping in here. Good. It moved too fast. Yeah, but it didn't move too far, so that's okay. 